Good morning and welcome to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz and today I want to talk about love, love in our animal families and what that could mean in the wider world. So I'd also like to invite you to type in any questions you have so we can have a little back and forth here and uh, we'll get started. So welcome again to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz and I'm an intuitive and spiritual consultant and a certified past life regression specialist based in Seattle, Washington. It's also my great honor to host a radio show at ownTimes.com called The Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. And my work is about helping all of us tap into our natural intuitive and healing abilities. And to do that today, I want to talk a little bit about love. Um, how that applies to our animal families and what that means in a practical daily sense. And also because I want to talk about that subject this afternoon in my radio show. My radio show airs every Monday at 2 Pacific time. Um, that's what, 5 Eastern time on the East Coast, um, whatever time it is around the world. Um, you're always welcome to join me live, to call in with questions or comments. Today, I am going to talk about practical intuition and our animal families. And as I was thinking about this subject today, I really wanted to share a really heart-filled moment with you. Hello, everyone. Um, again, thank you for joining me. And I'll admit I'm kind of a klutz with technology. So after these broadcasts, I try to go back in and go over your questions and answer them. And the system keeps kicking me out. So today I want to talk a little bit about the subject. And I also want you, as every single week, type in the questions you have, type in the thoughts that you're experiencing, and let's talk about it back and forth because that's what these Facebook lives are all about. And that's thanks to the wonderful people at home times who create this space for us. So I'm going to share a few things that'll bring tears to everyone's eyes, but also really expand our feeling about our animal families today. But first, as always, I want to start with a guided meditation with the crystal Fallon, call it a meditation, if you will, I just call it a quick connection. Fallon is Citrine Lemurian Quartz, and in one of these upcoming shows, maybe even next week, um, several people have asked me, how did you meet Fallon? How do I meet my crystal partner? I'm going to talk about that on a show and certainly on a Facebook Live. But for today, as you connect with Fallon in the way that your intuition works most strongly, just allow yourself to Get into the feeling of the moment and the connection with everyone here in this wonderful community where we are all together as, as one healthy, supportive community. Awesome. Thank you all for typing in and from where you're from. That's awesome. So Fallon, Citrine, Lemurian and Quartz, take your attention to the top of your head and think mind, body, and spirit are coming together here. And as you... Oh, as you're breathing down from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, just let that clear out all the blocks of the day and clear out all your cares and worries so that you can be here in this time with us so we can all grow our souls together. Awesome. Well, you could be seeing right through him to the shelf behind me, but people do see things in Fallon all the time and think of it as how your intuition works. If you see things, People have seen mountain ranges, dolphins, whales, everything in there. Um, and I'll tell that story coming up on another episode. If you hear things, don't be surprised. If you hear him telling you jokes, he's great on telling jokes. Feel his energy, which is extremely powerful, or simply know that you're connected. So top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Just breathe down. Let all the cares go away so that you can be here with us in this moment down from the top of your head, down your face, your shoulders, your chest, your, you could see your, <laughs> sorry, distracted by your questions, chest, hips, knees, and feet. And then back up again from your feet to the top of your head, just breathe in. Feel free to connect with this energy. It's completely safe, but very powerful. Feel, breathing up from your feet all the way to the top of your head. 
and just feel that amazing connection with Fallon. And uh, I normally um, talk with Fallon, uh, but I have felt his energy on certain occasions and it is amazing. So today, um, this afternoon on my radio show, I'm going to be talking about practical intuition and our animal families. Michigan, awesome. I lived in Ann Arbor for 10 years. That's where I got my MBA from the University of Michigan. So um, here's something I want to share with you. Love in our animal families. And, and I have what you may call kind of strong prejudices about that because I try to get people to not think about animals as teachers and gurus, but as family members. And what does that mean? Okay. Well, um, in thinking about this, I was remembering, um, here's a dog. His name was Alki. Um, Alki, I'm going to put it right there in front of my face. Alki was a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And have you ever seen a happier dog than this smile? Captured by a good friend of mine um, down here at our local beach. Hi, Jillian. Hi, everyone. And um, Alki died in 2015 after, well, I'm sorry, 2014 after a really horrific year the two of us had. Um, and we were chatting after he died. And um, <laughs> yes, I love that. Everybody has this issue with, with how we pronounced Oregon. I grew up in Oregon, so I know. So after he died, um, Elkai and I were talking about missing each other. And he said, we were a great team. And he said, we loved each other. And because we loved each other, there is more love in the world. And what a profound statement, because we loved each other, there is more love in the world. And I raise this today in regard to our animal families because it was this animal talking to me, although this is a very ancient soul and has been around many times. Um, but because thinking about love in our animal families, and um, here's this picture again. Thinking about love in our animal families also reminds us of love in the world. And a lot of us today are struggling with the ups, upheavals, the ups and downs of the world, and what seems to be a lot of hate and a lot of discord. And, you know, the truth of it is there's discord always, um, but I really believe that the love we share and the love that we connect with each other with is more powerful and is more prevalent and is more out there than all of the Simone. Yes. Love is contagious. I'm sorry. I'm got kind of weepy eyed here thinking about my beloved boy. He's back in a new body. He's currently calls himself Oliver. He's this same breed, but in a brown and white body or red and white body. So, you know, when we think about love and we think about a team and because we love each other and um, there's more love in the world, that I think is where we want to hold that feeling here in this community and here in our daily lives. Um, things get messed up. We make mistakes in our lives. Um, other people make mistakes and mess up the world in some ways or another. But the overriding feeling is, is love and how love permeates the world. And just think about it in your families. When you love your animals, when you love the other humans in your family, when you love your, your friends your extended family, even your city and your country where you live, that creates what we call a leavening agent, right? Yes, Oliver is alive. He's in the other room in a crate because he tends to bark when he hears me talking. And then all you would hear is barking, which, you know, may be great, but is kind of defeating the purpose of our connecting with us. So um, Al-Qaeda died in November 2017 and was reborn as Oliver in July, I said, I meant 2014, November 17th, 2014, was reborn as Oliver on July 28th, 2015. So he's three years old and he's a rabble rouser. <laughs> but think about love in the world. 
when we love each other here on the show, when we love each other in this community, and we love the people at home times who created this community for us, that makes the love go out into the world. And that is the antidote to everything that worries us, that everything that we're afraid of and everything that works in its own lack of loving way to block us in the world. And it's an incredible statement and it makes us feel connected to each other. But the problem um, that I want to bring up this afternoon in particular in my radio show is how we tend to overemphasize our animals as teachers and healers and our personal gurus. And what that does is keep us from really recognizing them as souls and bodies and those bodies that they've chosen to grow their souls and how it should be a mutual support thing and not us depending on them or them depending on us, but coming together in a family to grow. And that's where our intuition comes into play with our practical common sense of living together in the world. How do we, um, how do we look at healthcare issues for animals? How do we look at what's going on in the world? Food, vaccinations, the spay neuter issue, all kinds of things. So how does our love for our family and trying to do the right thing from the family expand out in how we live together in the world? So um, that's just really the point I wanted to make today. I was hoping um, that we could all talk together, share your stories, um, because as I said, I'm having trouble um, connecting after the broadcast to answer questions. So Cindy, you lost your gizmo. Trust me, I know how hard it is to get past loss. Give yourself some time. And time is is your choice. So it could take you weeks and months, and that's fine. Continue to live your daily life. Continue to honor the memory of Gizmo and the time that you shared together. And start remembering the happy times, which is what I started to do after Al-Qaeda died. Um, and... And we continue to move on and to grow from that. And um, yes, see, ad, animals do have rights as we do. And that's what we tend to forget sometimes. And they also have jobs to do that they have come in to do in the, in the bodies that they've chosen. And sometimes those jobs, particularly for animals, are amazing. Um, there's a well-known animal communicator who said the jobs that my my animal family has are cosmic jobs. And it's true. They are like, we didn't even know those kind of jobs existed, like ambassador between realms and so on and so forth. But look at your animals and support them to have healthy, strong bodies so that they can grow into whatever job they've chosen in the world. And my personal experience is my dogs at least have needed to be five years old before they really stepped into their cosmic jobs. And one of those jo- uh, one of those animals, my dog Murphy, wouldn't have even made it to doing her cosmic job if I hadn't stepped in and really studied and learned how to help a, an unhealthy, young, healthy, unhealthy dog become healthy and then live a long life. So um, there's that. Um, So Linda, what do you mean by you can see um, human in the animals? You mean you can see their souls um, because their souls are very different. Um, Well, not very different. The bodies that they've chosen certainly are very different. And a lot of us don't think that other beings who aren't human aren't equal to us, but that's where I come from in my operating philosophy of having talked with lots of animals, with lots of other non-humans, and realized that um, our human thinking is very limited, which is really interesting, right? Because my animals, my dogs and cats have come in and really shared with me amazing stories about their previous lives and about the work that they're doing and it's very humbling to have another being share that with you. Um, so Jenny, your dog, um, white chap died. Oh my God. I am, I am so sorry for that's a terrible story. And I hope that the love of the community can support you through that loss. Um, 
wow, it's, it's horrible and I'm sorry. And I hope that doesn't um, take away your love for others, for other humans as well as animals and know that you're supported here in the community with us. So other questions, other comments. Um, okay, so Nancy, you're breaking the law because you're feeding something. Um, I think you might be talking about wild animals. Um, I'm not sure because I can only see part of it here. Um, we do have that issue here in Seattle where I live. People are, we're leaving food out for foxes. That was bringing the coyotes out of the old growth forest, which is only a quarter mile from me in downtown Seattle here. Um, and then the coyotes were, you know, getting involved in the system in a different way than they were before because it was upsetting the food chain. So that may be partly what people are thinking about when they're asking you not to do that. It's just a question. Lost Nala after 21 years. Oh, my gosh. Nala was a cat, probably. Um, very. Simone, wonderful question. Um, your, your animal ran away. And how do we know if our pets have returned in different forms? Would cats return as dogs? Yes, they would. Uh, my animals and I have been around many, many lifetimes. And my two dogs and my cat were here. And now I have Oliver, who's three, and a year and a half year old cat, a Russian blue cat, who was my previous cat. But when I work with animal communication clients, um, I facilitate what I call a happiness talk, which is when they come to talk about, is it time for my animal to go? Are they ready? Um, are they not ready? Can we talk about this? We're having end of life conversations. And there are many times when the animal is like, yes, I know I'm dying. It's like very matter of fact about it. And they ask if they could come back as something else. And what's really funny is, um, I remember one time a cat asking me if it could come back as a dog, you know, really awkward, right? Because the cat hasn't died yet and it wants to know if it can come back as a dog. And that's a disorienting conversation for the human who's trying to decide if it's time over here. So you have to find a way to raise the subject. Well, it turned out in that particular case, the person had had cats all her life and was suddenly thinking really hard about wanting a dog. You know, so sometimes they kind of put that idea in our heads and sometimes they just switch and they come back to us and sometimes they don't. I think more often we miss them than we find them because they're popping in and out of our lives and we might not even know it. My first animals years ago were reincarnating and I had no idea that that was happening. So I think as humans, we're really lucky that our animals who the souls that are in our animal bodies are smart enough to pick bodies and then try to find us. So that's a pretty complicated subject. I do cover it in my upcoming book, but I have covered it in other, um, in other Facebook lives and radio shows. So um, other questions. Uh, from Beirut, Lebanon. Wow. Okay. A horse caregiver. I love horses. Um, there are many street cats. Um, so, okay, Nancy, you say there are many street cats. They come every year to catch and kill. It's horrible. What can you do? Um, are you saying people come to catch and kill the street cats um, or the cats come and kill, what, mice or other cats? I don't know. Um, if you're talking about your city administration, I would suggest going to the city and asking them. There are certainly in a lot of cities, and I don't know what city you live or if you're here in the United States, there are a lot of independent as well as city and county span sponsored shelters um, that do get involved in, um, uh, in pulling in stray animals and hopefully helping them get readopted. Um, so you might consider getting involved with one of those. But here in this community where we're working on becoming our best ability, our best healing and intuitives that we can, our best healers and intuitives that we can, try offering them simply energy healing. 
just offering energy to them to use as they will without any preconditions on it. That will keep the energy flowing. Any energy that's stuck from fear or aggression can then help be moved out. Does that make sense? And um, that's a really valuable skill that we can all add to the world is simply offering energy. The palms of our hands have healing energy and just offer that. Uh, I don't know what ERAF is, E-R-A-F dot org. Um, other quick questions here because we're running out of time. If, oh, so Nancy, you're talking about, yeah. Um, probably talking about local um, feeding wildlife. Um, you know, we have that tendency to want to do that. And I know a lot of people here in the Seattle area, for example, put out bird feeders and especially hummingbird feeders. Well, there's some hummingbirds that stay year round because that's how they're adapted. There are other hummingbirds that have to leave the area. So the question is, if we're feeding wild animals, how is that interrupting their natural life cycle? And um, are we helping them or not? And that's a question that, you know, each of us has to answer on our own uh, because we have this natural tendency to want to reach out and help, right? Which is awesome. And um, it's just a question of how do we do that? You know, and how does that affect the chain of life that goes on around us? Um, here in Seattle, for example, and this is a slightly different subject, but for the last over two weeks, we've been watching a female orca push her dead calf around um, in the ocean. And it's heartbreaking and there's nothing anybody could do about it, you know, because they're wild and also because it's that natural cycle. Well, she finally did let that calf go. And then what is our responsibility? That's what we're dealing with here and as a community. What is our responsibility to our local orca population that is dying and going into extinction because of lack of food and because of environmental toxins and as well as the heavy ship traffic that we have going back and forth that interrupts their um, echolocation abilities. So, you know, tough questions. So look intuitively into your own self, look into what the law is, what common sense shows you, what experience shows you, look at all the different issues and the least of which, and also probably one of the greatest things that we can do is offer them energy healing so that those animals can continue to live their life in the wild. Poisoning dogs, wow, that's terrible. Um, okay, so let me go back to here. See, okay, so I'm, I'm flipping through here as best I can. So Cindy's asking, one of Gizmo's pups, Rascal, has been totally withdrawn and won't interact with us or other pups. Um, prob yes, because Gizmo passed and Rascal is grieving. Energy healing, um, you can do hands-on, you can simply offer it to the environment that you're in. I would recommend putting out sea salt in the various rooms. Sea salt and energy healing will help clear energy and keep it moving. Stuck energy keeps us locked into our grief or whatever we are in that moment. It's okay to grieve. It's okay for all of us to grieve. But you may sit down with Rascal and explain Gizmo has passed away. Gizmo has died. And um, this is a natural thing that happens. We love you. We want you to stay with us. You, we want you to be happy. And we understand that you're grieving and grieving is normal. So talk to Rascal as you would to another human or another animal because they do understand you. Even if you're not hearing them respond to you, they do understand you. So use that as an opportunity for the family to come together and greet, even if it's just you and the animals. Um, I had a, okay, Jenny had two bear encounters when you were a little girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had a wild wolf encounter and it was 20 feet away from me. I was city girl, not expecting that at all. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, yeah, that can be amazing. Um, so let's see. Marie from Egypt they had a street cat. You were very close friends. Oh, wow. Oh, there it goes. Um, he didn't want to come home. You have four dogs now and you got a new rescue cat and it's not him. Well, you, Marie, you can talk to um, your cat that, that you lost, um, that you were very fr close friends with and just invite that cat to chat with you if that's how your intuition. Yes, Remo, today we're talking about love and how we take love out into the world and how um, love makes uh, a better place for all of us to live together. Um, we were talking about my, um, my dog, Alki, and how he said, because we loved each other, there's more love in the world. So how do we spread that love out there? We do it by being the best that we can be, by sharing questions and comments back and forth, by being together here in this space and talking about how do I do this, how do I do that, and letting everyone chime in with what they feel um, is important to them today. So I'm inviting people to ask questions and to share today. So, um, Marie, you were asking about connecting with a cat that had died. And all of you are looking to connect with your deceased loved ones. You can sit and hold space for like 10 minutes and say, oh, this is our time to be together. And just know that you're connecting. And over time, you may hear them chat with you. You may feel their energy or feel their presence with you. And um, it, it is really a beautiful thing. Um, we are close to the end of the time. I did want to share with you uh, Rose Quartz today. Rose Quartz is a crystal that you can all use in feeling the love that you have for your animal families and tending and sending that out into the world. Um, it'll help ease your grief. It'll help ease the grief of your loved ones who have passed on, especially animals, because they are really present for us continuing for a while after they die. And Rose Quartz is very healing. It's very soft energy. And um, for, for those who said your animals, uh, Gizmo, the, the dog rascal grieving, Rose Quartz around the area could help um, them. Be very careful about putting a crystal on an animal. Um, some crystals are really too strong for animals. Um, I haven't seen that happen with Rose Quartz, but be careful if you see an animal having a sudden reaction, you might pull it back. Sea salt, Rose Quartz, those are things to help the grieving process. And so when you're grieving, when you think about grieving, think about sending that love out into the world and just sharing it and allowing your beautiful soul to shine through. Um, loving an animal is really an amazing thing because what you're doing is you're loving another being that isn't in a human body. And if we can love another being, then how hard is it to get along with other humans? How long, how hard is it to create peace in the world? And I think that's where we're going when we're talking about loving and creating more love in the world. So all of you who have lost in animals, who have loved animals, you are helping to create more love in the world, and that's what matters. Um, Connie, you're asking about handing, handling um, feral cats. There are whole groups of people out there working with feral cats. I would suggest in your area locating a shelter or a local private group that works with that. That's how I got my first cat, um, of the local group that was literally pulling in stray cats. It's a tough issue. I know um, feral cats uh, reproduce amazing, well, not just because they're feral, but cats are really mixed up biologically and they really reproduce at astronomical rates. Um, so there needs to be some way of working with them to help that population just like us. So that's it for today. Um, I want to um, just be here present with you today, getting back into the regular routine of doing these Facebook Lives with you. I invite all questions and comments. Um, well, yes, animals are mammals, and I'm talking about animals in the whole life sense of animals, birds, 
I, I hesitate about snakes and, and spiders, okay? That's just me, but all animals out there. And I was really talking about my animal family and our animal families. And I know some people have snakes as family members. Good luck for you. I mean, <laughs> that's amazing. I could not do that, but there's my limitation. So um, I hope if you are enjoying these broadcasts to like the Humanity Healing page, to go to my Facebook page, the Practical Intuitive, and like that page, and to join me on my radio show this afternoon, the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's at ometimes.com radio. It's live at 2 Pacific time, 5 Eastern time. You are always welcome to call into that show and ask questions. Today we're talking about practical intuition in our animal families and going more in depth on the question of how we can live real practical lives with our animals, how we can use our intuition to think through the issues that affect them from vaccinations to spay neuter to food to really grieving family members as we do. But as we end today, let's cross our hands on our hearts and um, take a deep breath and just imagine that you're breathing healing energy into the palms of your hands. And as you just blow into the palms of your hands, imagine that as healing energy and then put it back on your heart, grounding you back into your body. And... I um, will try to address other questions here if I don't get knocked out of uh, trying to answer these questions here on Facebook. Um, Simone, the only way I know to call the feral animal population is to bring them in and to um, try to find them homes. Um, it's a tough situation all around, not something that can easily be dealt with here. But let your intuition, let your common sense look at that for your area and what are the public resources that your city or country or state have for those and how can we contribute to that. It's, there's um, so much that we can do in the world, but the thing that we're doing here together in the community is doing exactly what my dog Alki said. We love each other because we love each other. There's more love in the world. And that can keep things going, right? It can expand and expand our healing. It's really time for me to go now. Um, I will be back here next week. If there's something that you want to talk about, connect with me at my Facebook page, The Practical Intuitive Robin Fritz. And thank you for joining me. We'll see you next week.